Hello, this is Jeremy, and what I'm going to do in this video is go through a couple of examples using Chebyshev's theorem and also using the empirical rule. It takes a little bit of practice to be able to do these problems, but in both cases, it's really about directly applying uh, the theorem. There's no extra stuff to do beyond that. So in this particular example, we're given the average price of gasoline in the U.S. in 2007, and we're going to treat this essentially like a population average. And so notice the first question. It starts off by saying, what's the minimum percentage? Okay, minimum percentage, et cetera, et cetera. Whenever I talk about a minimum percentage and I'm relating it back to standard deviations, there's really not much else you can use other than Chebyshev. Let's think about what it's really asking us to do. It's saying if you were to count out three times by 0.06 away from 3.06, and you are going to do that both directions. So count up, count down three times. What is the smallest percentage that could be within that range of values? And it, that's the, exactly the question that Chebyshev answers. Notice we don't know anything about the shape of this. We don't know if it's skewed left, if it's skewed right, or anything. So again, Chebyshev can work with any distribution. So that's exactly what this is looking for. So essentially, this is Chebyshev with k equal to 3. So the answer to this question would be 1 minus... 1 over 3 squared using exactly that theorem. In other words, 1 minus 1 over 9 or 8 over 9. Writing that as a percentage, and all I'm doing is dividing 8 by 9, that would be about 88.9%. So in other words, 88.9%, at least 88.9% of gas stations had a price within three standard deviations of this. Another way to think about what this actually means is, if you were to take 3.06 and add 3 times 0.06, and 3.06 and subtract 3 times 0.06, then these two numbers, at least 89% of gas stations had prices in between those. And so again, it's all about using the standard deviation as almost like a measuring stick. And so I'm doing a quick calculation of what those numbers are. And for this value, I end up with 3.24. And for this value down here, I end up with 2.88. So in other words, just this little theorem and this little bit of information, I can tell you that at least 88.9% or about 89% of gas stations had a price per gallon between 288 and 324. So very, very powerful theorem if you really think about the information we're given versus what we can say back. Okay, notice that this is the same style question in part B as what we just did a second ago. The only change here is that now K is 2.5. So this would be 1 minus 1 over 2.5 squared. In other words, 1 minus 1 over 6.25, which ends up being about 84%. So if you count out by two and a half standard deviations, it has to be at least 84%. As we'll see a li little later on, depending on the distribution, this might be quite a bit more. And then this question goes further and actually asks us to do what we already did with A, which is, well, what prices would this represent? And just as we did before, what you would do is say, well, the range of values would be 3.06 minus two and a half standard deviations and 3.06 plus two, two and a half standard deviations. I'll leave that quick calculation to you, but these two numbers would give me the two gas prices for which we can say at least 84% of gas stations had. Okay, now in this last question, I've essentially gone and done the reverse information. In other words, I'm asking for a minimum percentage, but instead of giving you the number of standard deviations, I gave you two values. So the question is, what do you do with these? Well, it's still asking about the minimum percentage. So this is still a Chebyshev type of question, but you have to say, well, what's going to be K? Well, all I have to do is look at these two values and figure out how many standard deviations they are from the mean to figure out what K is. Now, I'm going to overdo this a bit. In other words, I think you could do this in your head, but let's take the mean 3.06. How many times do I have to subtract 0.06 to get 294? Well, if I subtract it once, what do I end up with? 3, right? If I subtract it a second time, there I go, I get 2.94. So this must be two standard deviations below the mean. Two standard devi deviations below the mean. 
Okay, well, what about 318? How many times do I have to add 0 0.06 to get 318? Well, one time I'll get 3.12, right? Another time I'll get 3.18. So this must be two standard deviations above. And again, I said we're assuming this is population data, right? So remember, this stands for population standard deviation. S stands for sample standard deviation. And remember, sigma squared stands for population variance. S squared stands for sample variance. So I'm using population data here. All right, so now I know both of these, are these, this is within two standard deviations of the mean. So in other words, the minimum percentage is going to be 1 minus 1 over 2 squared. K equals 2 here. So in other words, 1 minus 1 over 4, 3 fourths, which uh, we know is 75%. So once again, I can say at least 75% of gas stations had a price per gallon between 294 and 318. And all I'm given here is the population mean and the population standard deviation. I could do the same thing with a sample, but all my percentages would apply only to the sample, not to the whole population. Now the question is, uh, what else can you do? Is this really all you can say? Well, no. If I know distributions bell-shaped symmetric, I actually have a whole ton of theorems. We actually have a whole chapter later on about dealing with these types of distributions. A lot of powerful stuff comes from this. So it's very important for you to know the empirical rule. Um, you have to just have these numbers memorized. You'll find it very useful later anyway. And so Chebyshev couldn't tell me anything about one standard deviation. But I can tell you if I have a bell-shaped symmetric distribution, so this is what that general shape looks like, bell-shaped symmetric, and if the mean's right here in the middle, then I can say, well, 68% has to be within one standard deviation. 68%. In other words, 34%'s over here, 34%'s up here. So this is the mean minus one standard deviation and the mean plus one standard deviation. Okay, well, if I go two standard deviations, I actually almost get everything, 95% of the data. So if I go one more out, one more out, I'm not going to label these, but I'm going to get 95% of the data within here. A lot of times people will use this as a rule for outliers. They'll say if it's more than two standard deviations away, then when you actually have an outlier. And then finally, notice this, definitely three standard deviations away, you end up with almost all the data, 99.7%. So we use this a lot of the times just to understand how unique a data value is. If it's four standard deviations away from the mean, I know it's a very, very unique value. Not much data is out there. And we also can use it to generally state percentages about our data. In other words, I can say, well, about 12% of the data is between this number and this number. You may say, well, how can you do that? No, none of these numbers look like 12 to me. Well, notice here from the 68, I was able to bring out a 34 and a 34. There's a percentage I can put here and here, here and here. I can basically break this down. And that's what the next example will show you how to do. All right, so this example looks very similar to our Chebyshev example, but the big difference is we're told the distribution is bell-shaped. If I didn't know that, I couldn't really apply any of the stuff that I want to apply. We're also not asked about minimum percentages anymore. We're just asked the straight-out percentage. So those are two big differences. So, okay, we're told the scores on a standardized exam follow a bell-shaped distribution, the mean 610, standard deviation 75. The first question is, what percentage of scores are between 575 and 685? Now, just like before, I need to figure out what these represent in terms of number of standard deviations. Looking at the mean of 610, standard deviation of 75, I can see this is one standard deviation up. So one standard deviation up. And then 535, if I subtract uh, 610 minus 75, I end up with 535. So this is one standard deviation down. Now with Chebyshev, I'm sure you noticed, it was always one or two down, two up, three down, three up. It was always the same. It doesn't have to be that way with the empirical rule. We actually can get more information than that. So that's why I checked both numbers. Well, this is just 68%. You may say, well, how do you know that? Because I have the empirical rule memorized. And once you have the empirical rule memorized, you can just recognize that immediately. You can see that that's just a straight memorization type of thing. Okay, well, what about more interesting questions? What percentage of scores are higher than 760? Okay, we got only one number here. First thing I need to do is figure out how many standard deviations up 760 is. So if I take 610 and start adding 75, okay, that's just going to be 685. That's not enough. 
at 75 again. Oh, there we go. This should be 760. So in other words, this is two standard deviations up. Two standard deviations up. Okay, well, the empirical rule tells me that if I have my mean of 610, I go two standard deviations down, whatever that is, and two standard deviations up, which is 760, that I get 95% of stuff in here. But that isn't what I want to know here. I want to know what's higher than 760. That's what I want to find. Well, if 95% is here and everything's 100%, 5% must be left over, right? But half of that, 2.5% is over here, and half of that, 2.5% is over here. The reason I can say half is because in a symmetric distribution, the mean cuts everything in half. The distribution has the median and the mean almost exactly equal. So it's 50% to the left, 50% to the right. So my final answer here, what will be to the right of 760? Will be two and a half percent of the scores. Oh, so now you can start seeing all the extra information that comes out of this empirical rule. So let's try a couple more. Okay, very similar, right? Lower than 385. Well, 385, um, how many standard deviations is that below the mean? Well, here's the mean. I'm going to start subtracting standard deviations, so minus 75. That doesn't seem like it would be enough. Let me see if I subtract again, minus 75. So far, I'm just checking 610 minus 75, minus 75. I have 460, so it's got to be one more time, minus 75. I'll end up with my 385. So this is three standard deviations down from the mean. Okay, now what if it was four? Well, I don't really have an empirical rule for that, but for three I do. I have my distribution like this, and I know the mean 610, and I know if you count down three standard deviations, count up three standard deviations, that within here is 99.7% of the data. Okay, and I know that 385 is 3 down, and we want lower than, so we want the left-hand side. Well, what's left? 99.7%. If we take 100% subtract that, we are left with 0.3%. Right, so half of that has to be over here, half of that has to be over here. So this must be 0.15%, 0.15%. Now you can imagine that a common mistake would just to be, notice it's three standard deviations, say 0.3%. But point 0.3 represents above three standard deviations and below three standard deviations. So you have to remember that. That's why I only used half of it, because we're only looking at lower than. So again, it's really analyzing the picture based on the fact that this is a bell-shaped symmetric distribution. So one more, just to make sure we got the idea. This time I made sure to count differently on both ends. So okay, so 460 is obviously below the mean. 685, that's easy to see. That's one standard deviation up. But what about 460? So 610 minus 75 minus 75, I end up with 460. So this is two standard deviations down. Again, we didn't have to count by the same. And so a lot of times students would ask me now, well, could you count by half a standard deviation or something like that? Absolutely you can. Right now, the empirical rule is more for estimation, saying you're counting one, two, or three in either direction. But later, because of how bell-shaped symmetric distributions behave, we can actually be much more specific than this. So later, we'll be able to do that, coming up in uh, chapter five, I believe. Okay, so looking at this, I'm gonna draw a picture. Really drawing a picture of this is gonna be your most useful tool. And so six tenths my mean. And now between one and two, so I'm gonna just start marking off, here's within one standard deviation, here's within two. And so one down, I don't know what that is, I don't care, but I know one up is 685. And then two down, one, two, is 460. I don't know what two up is, I'm just having that as a label right now. So what are we trying to find between 460 and 685? So we're trying to find this whole piece right here. Okay, well, how can I use what I know? Remembering that this is the mean. Well, I know within one standard deviation, is 68%. But think about that, that's within one standard deviation, that's this whole thing right here. So this is all 68%. Okay, so that's part of my answer, right? Because that includes what we're trying to find. I just gotta figure out what this piece over here is. Well, I know that between 
two standard deviations is 95%, right? So what's left over here and left over here is whatever's between 95 and 68%. So 95 minus 68. But we only want half of it, right? This is half of that. So over 2. That will give me this little percentage right over there. So I end up with 13 and a half, 13 and a half. So my final answer must be this piece plus this piece. In other words, 13 and a half plus 68%. So 13.5 plus 68 is 81.5. So my final answer must be 81.5%. All right, that one was a bit more work, right? And it's because we counted down by a different amount than we counted up. But in the end, I'm able to take those rules that apply only to in-between and go in here and still find this information. So the empirical rule, very important to memorize. Chebyshev's theorem, very important to memorize because they give you a general overview of how we can use the standard deviation to understand entire distributions.